Okay, so here's what the packet looks like. Um, I'm gonna be going through starting with number three here on perimeter and area, and then I'll go into some fraction problems here. Um, I'm not gonna go through every one in the packet, just the ones that we really want you guys to focus on. So I'm gonna start with perimeter and area. So the first one says that the classroom rug is nine feet long and eight feet wide. What is the total area of the rug and what is the perimeter of the rug? So as I tell my class, the first thing you always wanna do is circle the numbers because those are what we need to solve the problem. So once I've circled my nine feet and my eight feet, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my paper here. And I know that perimeter means I'm going to add to find the distance around and then area means I'm going to multiply to find the amount inside. So when I'm thinking about my nine feet long and eight feet wide, so I'm gonna put my nine feet long and eight feet wide. Now, if you flip those measurements around and put eight feet here and nine feet there, that's not a big deal. As long as you are doing the area and the perimeter correctly. So when I'm looking at my rug here, when I talk about perimeter, I'm talking about the area around the outside. And when we're talking about area, we're talking about everything within right inside here. So I know in my class, one of the first things we always do when we look at area and perimeter is we make sure that there's measurements on every side because otherwise we can get confused. So if since this is a rectangle, these two sides are the same and these two sides are the same. So when I look at my eight feet, eight feet here means that it's going to be eight feet wide over here. Nine feet down here means it's going to be nine feet long up here. That just helps me with adding perimeter. So I'm gonna scooch my paper down a little bit here. So to find my perimeter, I am going to add to find the distance around the outside. So I'll take my eight feet plus my eight feet plus nine feet plus nine feet. And I'm gonna go ahead and add these two together because four numbers to add together is a little much. So I'm gonna do eight plus eight is 16 feet. Nine plus nine gives me 18 feet. And then when I add up my 16 plus my 18, running out of space down here, I get 34. So my total for my perimeter is 34 feet. Because I ran out of room, I'm gonna go ahead and move my area up to the top up here. So for my area, now, when we look at the area and perimeter, it said multiply, but we only wanna know what's inside of my rug here. How much area is this taking up? So I just need to know my formula for area is length times width. Length times width. So I'm just gonna take my length times my width. So nine times eight. So up at the top here, I'm just gonna take nine feet times eight feet equals 
So I could either use my trick with my hands, my nine times eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have 72, sorry, you can't really see my hands, but 72. Or if we know our facts, we could skip count. Um, when I do my answer here, I have 72, but because we're multiplying feet times feet, my feet are actually squared. So it would be 72 feet squared because I'm multiplying the feet together. Down here, when I was just adding the feet, eight plus eight plus nine feet plus nine feet, it's just 34 feet because we're not multiplying them together to find the, the total area inside. So my two answers here for this would be number 3A on your packet for the math portion, 34 feet for the perimeter and 72 feet squared for the area. So now I'm gonna remember my perimeter and my area here and move on to three, it's not marked B, but the next problem down in your packet. And this one is talking about Chrissy. Chrissy is going to make a big wood painting on a piece of wood that is four feet wide and seven feet long. What is the total area of the piece of wood? What is the perimeter of the piece of wood? So this is very similar to what we did before. We're gonna start by drawing out our piece of wood here. So it said it was nine feet, or sorry, four feet wide. And remember if I'm gonna put that over here, then I need to go ahead and put it over here as well. And it's seven feet long. All right, so first thing I wanna do is find my perimeter, which if I remember from what we just did before, the perimeter tells me that I want to add to find the distance around. So I'm gonna add my seven feet plus seven feet plus four feet plus four feet. So again, I'm going to break them up. So seven plus seven gives me 14 feet, plus four plus four gives me eight feet. So 14 plus eight is going to give me 22 feet. Now remember, this is not squared because we're just adding around the outside. We're not multiplying to find the area in the inside, we're just adding. So it's not squared, it's just 22 feet. Okay, so if you're following along with me, we'll give a star on that one. And let's go ahead and do area down here. So for my area, Remember, I'm gonna take my length times my width. So my length is seven feet times my width is four feet. So this gives me a total of 28 feet squared. If you're not sure your facts here for seven times four, you can always count up skip count, or we could take seven times two plus seven times two, so that would give me 14 plus 14 gives me 28. So 28 feet squared is gonna be your answer for area. For the last one on area and perimeter, we are going to do this problem right here. It says the school playground measures 465 feet by 285 feet. What is the perimeter? This word right here is really important. Perimeter of the playground. So it's telling us 
that it measures, the playground is really big. It measures 465 feet by 285 feet. Now, before we get frustrated and think, how am I gonna multiply these? It's only asking you for a perimeter. So when we think about the perimeter, all we're doing is adding around the outside. So we've got 285 feet here. So that means up here, I've got 285 feet. And then to the side over here, I have two, five, or 465 feet. So all I'm gonna do to find perimeter is to add these up. And I'm actually just gonna use the middle of this to add these up. So I have 285. That's really hard to add all of these four at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add these two together and then add my 465 plus 465 together. Let's move it a little closer here. There we go. So I've got 570 feet. And then over here, 930. So then I just need to add those together. 930 plus 570. So my total for my perimeter down here is going to be 1,500 feet. And it's not squared because we just added them up. We're not finding the area and multiplying. We're just finding perimeter. So 1,500 feet. So next I'm going to move on to the fraction portion of your packet. So down here at the bottom, this is number 10. I'm going to go through about three of these, and then I'll leave the other three for you guys to do. You should be able to figure them out based on um, what we start here. So it asks me A for one half of 24. So when I'm looking at one half of 24, the first thing I'm going to do is draw out my fraction. So one half tells me that it's split into our bottom, our denominator tells us how many our fraction is split into. So one half and one half. So as I'm looking at this, I know that the total right here is 24. And I'm gonna use this to figure out what is one half of 24? So I have two options here. I can either take 24 divided by two, if I know that math fact, or I can draw out my two circles here because I'm splitting 24 into two parts. So if I don't know 24 divided by two, I'm just gonna split it and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I'm not spending a lot of time explaining this just because this is what we did for division. Okay, so I stopped at 24 because I have 24 total and I'm dividing them into two parts. So in each of these, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I got to make sure it's equal because when we're dividing, it should be equal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that tells me that 1 half of 24 is 12. I can check that down here with my 24 divided by 2. Remember when we look work on division... Two, basically this equal sign is telling us times. Two times what gives me 24? Because multiplication and division are just the opposite of each other. So two times 12 should give me 24. If I add up 12 plus 12, I get 24. So when I go to answer my question on my sheet here, what is one half of 24? It's 12. 
Now, there are lots of different ways to do this. I'm just showing you two of the ways that we kind of have worked on, but there's lots of different ways that you could solve this. So let's now look at, let's look at one fourth of 24. So one fourth of 24, First thing I'm going to do is look at my denominator. How many pieces is this need, does my fraction need to be split into? It needs to be split into four. So one, two, three, four. So each of these is one fourth and we want to know how much of 24 total is one fourth. So again, I'm gonna split my 24 into four pieces. You could use your multiplication and do four times what equals 24. Some of us know that fact really well, four times six, but let me check my answer. 24 divided by four means I need to split into four pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So right here, if I count these up, I have six in there, six in that one, six, and six. So I know for sure that one-fourth of 24, if I go back to my packet here, one-fourth of 24 is six. Um, let's do this last one. The last one I'll do here is one eighth of 24. One eighth of 24. So I look at my denominator right here. My denominator tells me that I need to split into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, add on another one, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My total is 24. And I wanna know how many go in each. So that's gonna say 24 divided by eight pieces. Eight times what gives me 24 if we flip it. Otherwise, up here at the top, I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and get to 24. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I can see there's three in each. Eight times three is 24. Another way to check your answer that I didn't do in the last ones was you could put three, 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 in each of the eight pieces, and we could add them together or skip count. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So I know when I go back to my packet that one eighth of 24 is three. That's kind of a silly three, but um, three. So those are the ones that I'm gonna focus on today. There is one more fraction problem right here, number four, back on the front, um, looking at comparing. So it wants to know what is less than one half. You have some answers here, what's less than one half. Um, but if I think of, back to my example of 24, so if this whole thing is 24, let me bring back my example that I did. Okay, so if this whole box is 24 and each of them is worth 12, then less than one half would have to be less than, because 12 out of 24 is the same thing as one half. So it needs to be less than 12 out of 24. So for example, right here, I could put 
11 out of 24. That's going to be less than one half. One half is greater than 11 out of 24. So there's lots of fractions that we could draw out to fit in this second one too. For example, if I wanted to draw out like one half is here and that's how much one half is. And then if I decided, you know what, let me look at what one third looks like. So I drew my three pieces. Here's one third, one third, and one third. When I'm looking at my fractions and someone offers me half of a brownie or a third of a brownie, I can see that a half is going to be a lot bigger if I put, I'll put a little bit closer here. A half is going to be bigger than a third. Okay, so for this problem as well over here, one third could be smaller or less than one half. This one's asking you for something though that's greater. So this one's asking something that's greater than one half. And so if I colored in two of these, two thirds, two thirds is definitely going to be greater than one half. Same thing over here, we could actually just cross these out and say one third is greater or is less than one half. And we could use this same example for both. because it did say use the digits one to nine. I used our other example, but these either of these would work there. So this is all we're gonna go through for this week for my portion. If you guys have questions or problems that you're wondering about or confused about, please reach out on School Connects or on email. I'll put my email down below as well, or email your teacher. Um, and we will try to work through the problems every week um, and upload them to our channel, the ones that we think are a little bit more complicated um, or ones that you might need a little help with and we want you to focus on. Hope that you guys are doing well, staying safe, and um, keep finding fun things to do even though we're all stuck inside. So we will talk to you next week and look forward to hearing from you guys.